So we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I've written a few articles over the years about arcades in mainland Asia and places where I've lived. I have one about arcades in China, one about arcades in Korea, uh, both of which I will link in the description. I also had a video that was about Korean arcades, but I never did one for China. So let's go ahead and amend that today. I find these interesting because although there isn't a huge difference between arcades in different places, uh, there are some little differences in the culture around them. Starting with something very obvious, which is you're going to notice all of these things, big on the crane game. All of this, this entire section we're walking through right now, it's all the crane game. Uh, and if it's not crane game, it's gotcha machines. They've got a few other, more or less prize redemption type of things. These are really common to the point where there are even little pocket arcades that are just the crane game. Okay, now we are, our second arcade, we're in Super Player, which is the standard arcade chain for Wanda Centers. Some of them will have more than one arcade, in which case they may be branded separately, but this one you'll always find Super Player. It's the most common. Now here on the right, you, we saw this in the last location, we'll see them later. These are KTV booths, which are pretty common. KTV is better known by, in the West, by the Japanese appellation, karaoke. And these are uh, very, very popular. KTV in general is very popular. It's kind of the standard thing to do with friends or family or on dates in this country. And you will occasionally encounter these little booths. I've even seen them outside of shopping centers or like supermarkets. This weird way they designed these places so that when you leave a supermarket, you have to walk past more um, like businesses. And you will find little arcades outside of those. And you'll find these KTV booths. Now, we're going to leave uh, Super Player in a moment. And we're going to go to the roof of this shopping center. This is a kind of thing you see in China fairly frequently. You have these, what are essentially these like little fake European streets. And they'll have restaurants, and this one has a couple of clubs if you go up those stairs, but it also has arcades. Starting with this, this is one of those little pocket arcades I just mentioned. As you can see, it is just the crane game. Uh, if you pay attention, you'll notice there are, there are things in there you would not normally associate with crane game. Like a lot of these are food. And then we're going to go upstairs in a minute to a larger arcade. But these little pocket arcades are all over the place. They're everywhere in Korea as well, because they're a very efficient use of space in places that are very built up. Now, the importance of the crane game uh, in this country, I I'll say that there are people on, like, Chinese social media, Chinese internet, uh, Chinese influencers, and the like, who uh, have achieved fame because they can allegedly win these things on a consistent basis. Not sure if I believe it, but that's how it is. Uh, they're also important because, believe it or not, these arcades can actually be a popular date location, especially for college students, but also for people a little bit older. Uh, I have been on dates to places like this. Not my idea. Not my idea. You know, me and the, the girl were walking past and she wanted to go in. All right. I, I am on the spectrum. I'm not that far down it. All right. Now this is, here is an illustration of how much they really use the space in, in these countries. What The next few clips you're going to see are not really arcades. These are outdoor shopping centers. All right, so instead of being one big building, you have a series of buildings. There's no real interior. Like each shop is kind of on its own. So it's like a series of strip malls. And this is passing through the middle. You have all these corridors. And just to make sure they are maximizing using every inch of the space, they put in some arcade cabinets. And this is really common, really common. When you go into the bigger, like, malls, they have malls that are vertical. They'll go up 10-plus stories. These are everywhere. Any space they have, they're going to put some crane games in. Now, these are arcades. They're kind of two types of arcades. Most of the ones we've seen before this are sort of your general purpose arcades. These ones tend to be more child oriented. You'll notice a lot of smaller machines in here that are clearly not made with adults in mind. And in a moment, we're going to take a walk past one of these. Uh, this one is uh, Tao Chi Baby, I believe was the name. Uh, we're not going to go through this one. You are going to see some familiar sites. Just from the decor, you can probably get the idea. This one is 
targeted a little bit differently. We're going to see some more KTV boos over here. Yeah, there they are. And if we did go through this one, this is actually a pretty sizable one. You would see like a, like a play center in the back for like the really little kids. It's like a really crappy McDonald's play place. So now the quality has dropped because we're going to my old footage. This was from a little walking tour I included in the uh, original article I wrote, the uh, Chinese arcade. It's got a few things in here you'll notice. They have like the little uh, kind of multi-arcade emulators. They have the basketball shooting games, all of them very popular. You'll have these really great little like rail shooter game uh, that you fire, has a physical interface. It actually fires water at the screen, which sounds like a gimmick, but they're actually really cool. I kind of wish they were more common in the West, but you don't really see them that much. Lots of uh, rhythm games as well. But one of the culturally significant uh, elements to arcades like this, especially in China, is you probably know there was a ban on video game hardware for a while in the 2000s. And when that ban was lifted, uh, they actually lifted it in phases. And they started by bringing back arcade machines. And I, when I was in here, here the first time back in 2008... Uh, I saw some of those first arcades that on the right. That's the one I'm talking about. I believe that's Hero of Steel. Hero of Steel owns. But yeah, so for a lot of people, this was kind of their reintroduction for video games after they'd been mostly gone from society for a while. Now, this last thing you're going to see is, again, this is leading out of a um, supermarket. Like I said, you have to walk by several of these little arcades. So here's another one of those pocket arcades that's just the crane game. All right, nothing unusual here. But just to show you how they maximize the space, as we're leaving the crane game arcade, we look up, there on the left, it's more crane machines. These things are everywhere, because why not, right? There's space along that wall. So of course we're going to put in some more crane machines. So if you take away nothing else from this video, nothing else at all is in Asia, Really big fans of the crane game. They love it.